up against Simp. Still look good in the run, right? Yes, they lost 6 3. But for me, I expect Optic Gaming LA to come out here and close out game two as well. Well, we'll see if they can get it done. They're going to be kicked off on offense first. And actually, they're going to be sending quite a few people to A. And look at that defensive setup from Florida. They are making the read. They got players up in the top house. And you got Havoc, I think, just pushing straight through the smoke. He's just okay. going for it. He's going to cause chaos. Wait. He's behind how did enemy he... lines already. How did he not hear him? I don't know, but he finds a free kill on JCAP. Now she's not going to expect this at all. And that is a very bold and brave round number one from the Florida Mutineers. The strat, throw your smokes and fly. Okay, that's the most crackhead thing I've seen so far in this game this year. That's absurd, and what if genuinely, what a smart strat coming in from Havoc. You wonder why they can't hear him. It's because he's standing in between four of them. They all think he's like they're hearing he's each other. Smoke. Who's going to expect that? Now, next round, you better believe they're going to be prepared <laughs> for it. But at the same time, this is not the easiest map in the world to flank on. When you flank, you have to check 18 different corners before you get there. It, it, the best way right. to flank, apparently, have it figured out, just go straight through. It's worth mentioning, that's more of a cheese strat, if you will. I, it, yeah, that, I don't you're think not going to see that every single round. It's just a, hey, by the way, guys, we're, we've prepped something a little interesting for you, and it works out fantastically for Florida Mutineers. Now with the lead, 1-0. and oh, Havoc found two, as did Frosty. But there's the nades defensively that come through. Prestini and Havoc both fall. It's up to gaming with the advantage. Hey, Ben, you know how to stop the aggression? Throw some stuns, throw some nades. It'll stop them right in their tracks. Maybe a good idea for the next round for Optic Gaming. Obviously, <laughs> this one, utility paying dividends. You get the free first blood. You follow it up immediately. You're in a 3v5 on offense. You're getting flanked. Oh. Everything's happening. Expect this round to end in the next 15 seconds, unless guys goes crazy. Well, TJ knows now as Slasher falls, he has to maybe pick up the pace just a little bit. Collapse in, try and pinch. And Slash maybe the first to fall. Yep, there's TJ. That was a relatively obvious play. Oh, POV looking at that minimap. Frosty though, can he trade it? And TJ scrambles away, and the longer he just stays alive is the important thing here. He doesn't necessarily even have to find a kill, and as Frosty left it by himself as Mox falls. This for the 1v4, round over, Optic Gaming tie things up. And this is something that Optic Gaming against FaZe actually did very well. It was their utility that won them quite a few rounds. It was the smoke push. So many first bloods with nades. It was all the nades that are forcing players, if not killing them out of windows. So it really does seem like Optic Gaming has taken quite a bit of time to try to figure out some of these search and destroy strats. They've had a month or whatever it's been since Minnesota to figure these sorts of things out, and they look pretty well prepared so far. And that was the rumor, right? Coming into this weekend, it was, well, Optic Gaming look better in their online scrims. And all the practice, things seem to be improving. And I guess we are theoretically seeing that here. The preparation and search and destroy, definitely something of note. I'm curious to see what we get from Florida Mutineers after that first round. Again, a pretty heavy stack over towards A. Of course, no fast rush so far. Instead, up to game one, the attacker looking for Dashi to find the pick. Havoc will be traded out, but the man advantage still falls for Florida. Good trades the whole way around. That puts more pressure on Dashi to find a pick, but nothing on that hill for the moment. Mox, the potential first victim of the sniper, but you can see he is barely peeking on any of these head glitches. And of course, he's got Frosty watching over as well. You see the glint of the sniper. It only stays there for a moment. Frosty could have an easy kill in front of him. Just got to be patient. 40 seconds still in this round. Jacob trying to find an opening for up to gaming, and there it is. The pick onto Mox. That now levels the playing field. Three versus three. Frosty Dead Sounds just became available as Dashi actually finds the snipe, so never mind. Frosty falls up to gaming with the man advantage. Bomb going down. Well, Dashi's going to have to back away. Persini's the man that has to make a play. He does. He gets the bomb planter to at least force to come up. And Jcap turns oh, no. around at the worst time, drops the bomb in the open. Dashi has 10 seconds. He's got to find the kill. Time ticking. He's got to be quick. Dashi challenging. Will he find the kill? He will. And Optic Gaming win the round with just a few seconds left. Two to one. The advantage now. Jcap had to be nervous. That situation is very much you either go for the kill since you know exactly where he is or you go for the plan. I don't know if in comms players were telling him different things, but the worst thing you can do in that situation <laughs> is drop the bomb in front of the other player. Luckily for him, though, Dashi does clutch up. Optic Gaming bump up the lead. Only by a round. 2 1. Of course, for Optic LA, they go back on the defensive side. Florida Mutineers, will it be another A push? Can we potentially see B? I feel like earlier on in the uh, Optic versus Phase game, there was a lot of B pushes 
on this map specifically. And, well, mid map is being hit. Well, we're probably going to see B this round as well. Asking you shall receive. There's a player from Florida that tried to get through very quickly. I'm assuming it was Havoc based on the pass, and he gets chopped down. So nice little man advantage for the Florida Mutineers, but it hasn't lasted in the past. Last round, Optic did clutch up. They're going to have to do so once again to B3. It's Dashy with the sniper. He's not going to see anything just yet. 3v3. Sorry. Prostini. Oh, he will fall. It's DJ outskirts that finds him. Dashy gets the second. So you blink. And Skies is now in a one versus three. All the work in the world to do. 37 seconds on the clock. So time will start ticking. He's going to have to start making moves. I think he knows exactly where Slasher is. Well, Dashy's going to call him out. There should now just be a few moments before he falls. Nice grenade. Nice little grenade coming in. We talked about the utility from out the game and looking pretty good. That one's more of a, a stamp on the round, but not only is it being in a 1v3, that's pretty difficult already. As soon as Slasher gets the information, spots him out mid-map, it becomes just hopeless. You just throw shoulders as many times as you possibly can and just waste time off the clock. Another solid round. The only one Florida's got was oh, having... Geez. <laughs> call it, geez, I call it genius, but either way, something that will not be replicated for quite some time. There's a quick glance at your steps as well. Kawaba leads the way for Optic Gaming. Five and three. TJ is four and two. Dashy three and one as well. Jcap, who had a fantastic game one, he finds himself three and three. As smokes, and stuns, and nades all thrown out. Over towards the A site, and it's all a very elaborate bluff. He goes up to Gaming. Quabo already in a fantastic spot. You hear the doors getting opened up underneath them. The bomb might be able to get planted pretty shortly. And Skies starting the wrap back. Quabo go up top. Skies has got to go hunting. I don't know how loud he's going to be, but it looks like Quabo heard him, turns on him, and gets the kill. First blood for Optic. Bomb also is being planted. And this is going to be a very hard retake now. Four versus five. As Prestini looks through the window, recognizing not really much he can do. Dashy. Gets himself in a sneaky little spot, bottom middle, but Mark springs into life. He does level it, four versus four, but with 30 seconds, time is of the essence. You've got to go quickly. Jcap's covering the window. The trade does come through, though. There's still two players for Florida Mutineers that could try and make this happen. Havoc and Prestini, but TJ shuts down Prestini. Now it's all down to Havoc. He makes it maybe interesting in a one versus two, but with no other play available, he tries to hop the bomb up to check it. 4-1 up to Gaming LA. And an interesting setup as well from Florida. Uh, obviously, the very first round when they forced that BA side, it paid dividends. But we watched out the gaming today. They went to B quite a bit. As soon as those smokes come out mid map, that's that. been the play every time. Quavo has gone through as fast as he could. And yep. they weren't too quick on the retake. And by the time they have players back, you have 25, 30 seconds on the clock to flood into a, a, a bomb site where there's eight corners you have to check out of time. It's just a very difficult retake on the bomb. But out the gaming, know that. They'll take the round. You almost feel like you have to react a little quicker in that sense. You, as you mentioned, you've seen Optic Gaming play this map earlier on today, where they showed that B strat quite a couple of times, a fair amount of times at that. And again, as we mentioned earlier on, and as I'm, I'm sure so many of the other casters they have, with the time changing from two minute rounds to a minute 30, you just have to be that little bit quicker when it comes to search and destroy, specifically so on this map. Smokes out on bomb, but probably a little bit past. He knows the bomb's clear, but he's able to find that first kill. Havoc behind at least one enemy's line. He's trying to be quiet for the kill. Slasher just knows. makes the read, has it pre-aimed, and it's a free kill for him. Man advantage out. I'm pretty sure it was Dashy that actually gave that call out to Slasher, so he's ready for that fight to come through. But Slasher will fall, as will TJ. So just like that, when you think things are going well, it crumbles for Optic Gaming. Everyone gets caught. Florida win their second round. Optic still with the advantage in the series, though. I think it was Frosty, but whoever it was that won the gunfight on the player just above that little half rock wall, I mean, that's the kind of gunfight that wins you the round. Like, Quavo, after right. he gets that first blood, he's in a tough spot because he's effectively by himself well past the bomb, so eventually he gets dropped. But those are not easy gunfights to win on the player up on the wall. The difference maker, but now we got Optic back on the attack. They've shown it a few times. But even today, they've gone be the majority of their runs. And again, as soon as, you see that smoke, adjustment. as soon as you see that smoke, I feel like you have to just adjust quicker. This time, it looks as if they will. Florida, as opposed to sending four people to A, instead say 3-1-1 one, one will be the setup on the map. Dashi shows over towards the A side. But you can see the presence from Optic Gaming. They've spread the map, looking for maybe a pick, which could give them license to push. 
I would imagine somewhere in their comms they were saying Havoc's going to overextend himself eventually. Let's see if we can wait for the kill. This time, though, Havoc much more patient. So after gaming, 30 seconds have gone by. Now they have to start making their moves. Not a lot of time on the clock for them to make something happen. Still a little bit of utility left, but it's going to be TJ Shorley that will have the gunfight for first blood. Skies just backs away. TJ's at least got a little bit of sight control, but the first blood does come through for Monks. It's J-Cap that falls. Now can Dashi put himself into a position to find that first blood? Well, Skies defensively is trying to find something. There's two players outskirts. There's the first. Quavo shredded. And whilst all this fight is going on, Chance, 25 seconds left in the round. Time has been burnt. TJ is bombed up. It looks like they're thinking about the wrap. TJ's cut through mid map, but that's because Slash is actually behind. If he got to the house, he's able to find one, but now you should have good information. But Florida is wrapping back pretty quickly. 10 seconds on the clock. You I mean, gotta kill the man off bomb. They know. All you have to do is try and check as quickly as possible. Dashy and TJ. That's spots one. That's the kill. Very well played. Frosty, of course, is in support, but look at the play Dashy's made. He should maybe find the first. Not gonna happen. Frosty clutches up. Florida get the third round. Havoc is greasy, man. He, he's feeling himself <laughs> as well. That round, I mean, he gets hurt the entire way when he's flanking around back. He is very loud without that dead silence. So the man that was in the corner knew exactly what gunfight he needed to take. But Havoc just shreds him. Worth mentioning, Havoc, of course, uh, will wait to defuse the bomb, try and build that dead silence. You can see that in the top of your screens there. He's currently at 78%. We'd love to start the next round with dead silence available to try and make a, another sneaky play. He's a sneaky one. Looks like at least off the rip, Florida have two players with dead silence to kick off the round. I think Optic Gaming, though, had three, so you think some pressure's coming on, you can pop dead silence yourself. Quite a few of them are going to be on board. But obviously, if you're looking for a playmaker, Havoc, he's been that guy for Florida so far. Honestly, I'm looking at Pristini. Not necessarily to be the, the, the opening playmaker, but a poor hard point, and so far, a poor search and destroy as well. Three and six he sits at, but you're absolutely right. It has been Havoc that's been making the opening plays. And there's a very sneaky, well thought through first round. And here's a look at Prestini. He will be bomb carrier as well, which may explain why he's had a, a little bit of unsuccessful moments, but that's a very unsuccessful moment. TJ finds two. Mox is there to finally trade, but already with a minute left, Florida, a man down. Really seemed like right there, they were just hoping someone wasn't going to be in that window. Yeah, they didn't even check it. And they guessed wrong. TJ was free two kills. Nice little advantage for Optic Gaming. Some more dead silences coming on board. And on Arklov, it's not easy to wrap this bomb out. And if they do, I mean, it's They've Slasher. Done it. Slasher it. will slash is behind enemy lines. How quickly is he going to realize that the last few Florida players have already managed to get site control? So essentially, the flank may be flanked again. And that's what Frosty's looking for. That Slasher is out of there. And it's just all this waste of time. Like, even if I have the game, yeah, you have to it, it, it doesn't matter. Because now you're going to have to plant in a bad situation. They just let Slasher through, try to rewrap back. And it's just a bad situation that all spiraled off the first two kills. Frosty will find one. Makes it a 2v3. But now your hand has been shown. Jcap will find Mox. And Jcap will find the last player as well. Up to gaming. Within touching distance now of closing out game two. And, and there's just no reason for it to happen. It's just yeah. not clean search and destroy. Like, whoever that was the, the second gunfight in, I think it was Mox. Like, if the window's going to be open, just wait an extra second before you try to play it. Just watch the window until Mox gets there to get your cover. Like, I don't know if it's a communication thing, if they're just going off the game plan, hoping someone's not going to be in the window. But either way, you feed TJ effectively. Well, one free kill, then just has to win one gunfight. And in my mind, that almost just it wins you the round for Optic. Bear in mind, heading into that round, it was uh, four first bloods for Florida Mutineers, three to Optic Gaming. So in terms of first bloods, Florida's getting them. They're just not converting that first blood into round wins as well. And Optic Gaming, once again, this mid-map push. I think you heard a, a couple smokes, or at least hit trophies. And well, for Cini, he's going to have a, a nice little first kill on Quavo. He's able to stay alive for the moment. Does get traded out, though, but he has to slow down the push. Frosty gets himself two. Dashi looks to try and trade. Plea for him. J Cap is there, but J Cap will fall. Dashi now for the improbable one versus three. He's been spotted. He's been hunted down in Florida. Down but not out. Staying alive here in game two. And Frosty is gunning people at this point. I, we like flip two of just like a split yeah. second too late, but he probably had one easy kill. I think it was on Prestini and then Slasher. Just, woo. Didn't win the gunfight, man. Didn't win the gunfight in Florida. Live to see another round. They're going to need two more in a row. 
They've had problems getting stuff to going together on offense, but like frankly, even last round, like they were able to get clearance over towards the site. It's just the little small things they're they're screwing up on right now. I mean, now. you talk about Frosty, nine and five, as it stands. Heat it up. He was on a five spree the, the round yeah. before. So playing very, very well, but is it enough to potentially see a round 11 here in game two? Frosty with the snipe out. May find the first pick. I'm going to show, though, Prestini finds first blood. That's two rounds in a row for him. Skies follows it up as well. Florida, they're now in the driving seat to close this one out and force a round 11 unless Jcap has something to say about it. There's one almost found the second. Havoc saves the day in that gunfight. And still, the advantage for Florida Mutineers in this round. Oh, they, they know exactly where he is now. As soon as you drop from that high up, you get hurt <laughs> from... Players it's on like a, a different like elephant there, there were around. players in the pro lounge right now <laughs> that are scrimming on a different map that just heard Quavo land from there. But either way, nice clean round. It's been, I mean, you get the first blood, you get the second blood, you right. get all the kills. Helps, Makes right? it easy. Some rounds you need good strats. Some rounds you just need to gun the opposition and forge J-Cap. There was an opening, maybe if he finds the two-piece, but just a bullet off getting that next kill. And it all comes down to this, man, the round 11. Let's have a good round 11. Can Florida. Stay true. They have the defensive side for up to gaming LA. It's attacking. Well, looks like it's going to be one of those quicker rounds potentially. As th four players from Florida started running towards A. One will peel away. So again, a 3 1 1 split for Florida defensively. For up to gaming LA, it is clear as day. It's going to be an A push. Trophy's saving lives. Kenny has gotten past the, the mid mark point. He can get to the rock to shoot the player off bomb, and just like that, first blood is it's in. It's too easy. It's way too easy. No one checking. And Quavo says, Thank you very much. I'll claim a man advantage. And Skies needs to be careful. Havoc actually finds himself a double. All of a sudden, the round looks very, very different as Frosty finds one as well. Havoc wants to just try and push straight through the smoke. That's three for him in the round. And just like that, Dashi left to perform heroics. A one versus four. I think he did he spot Skies. Absolutely. He could maybe make this interesting. If he can turn this into a one versus two, his teammates will without a doubt call that out. There's Skies, but Skies wins the gunfight anyway. And Florida Mutineers, who were so heavily...